Yes, yes, people. Welcome back to the Magpie Channel TV. Got a big video today. Transfer to Linda. You thought it was over, right? You thought the transfer news was done. You might be wrong. Obviously, the Saudi Arabian transfer window does not close until Thursday. It's currently Wednesday I'm doing this video. And the rumours are starting to rife up about a potential exit for Newcastle United's captain. Wait and see on that one. Before we do talk about... Jamal Lascelles and his potential move to Saudi Arabia. I want to talk about an upcoming event in Newcastle this November. It is purely belter. Jerry and Sewell, the play at Live Theatre on the Keyside. I am buzzing for this one. Surely a lot of you are fans of the purely belter film from back in the day. It was an absolute classic. Shira's car got stolen, all of that. Two lads trying the best to try and get season tickets who are skint and can't afford it. Pretty much the story... Of me and Keg right now. No, you know what I mean? Loads of you guys are fans who can't get tickets. They like gold dust. So it's relevant that they've brought this back and they've put a modern spin on the movie. Really excited to see this one. I'm going to speak to the director, the cast, and tell you a bit more about it in this well, video. A different backdrop today. You probably can't see it from there, but there is seeing Shimmer's Park in the background. But we had a day to talk about the play that's coming up at Live Theatre on the Quayside this November. It is a return of the iconic Piali Belta movie from back in the day, unreal film, loved it as a, as a kid, you know, I had it on VHS, that's how old that is, but the guys here are putting together a modern twist on it with this play that is upcoming at Live Theatre. It sold out last year at Whitley Bay, it was a big success, some great entertainment in the area, and it's not like what some people may expect from the theatre, listen, I'm not hoity doity out of the theatre too often, I go now and again, do you know what I mean? But not really. Uh, and this is something different. This is something I would go to and will be going to. Um, and I know a lot of other people in the area will be going to it as well because we have that attachment to the Newcastle United Football Club and we have the attachment to the, the film Piali Bella, which obviously Alan Shearer and everything was in back in the day as well. So this one is going to be class, by the way. The atmosphere is going to be brilliant at the theatre. War flags are going to be there. That's how bouncing it's going to be. They're going to have a display on. There may be one or two special guests, not just me. You know what I mean? But you'll wait and see about that. But we're going to speak to the cast today. We're going to speak to the director as well. They're going to tell you a bit about it. So let's hear from them right now. Right, we're joined here by the director of the Purely Belt. I play Jamie. Introduce yourself, mate, and let me know what we can expect. Uh, yeah, so uh, I adapted uh, the the original novel that became the film for Purely Belter. Um We did it last year, ran for five weeks in Whitley Bay. Um, and it's sort of a crazy retelling of that sort of famous Geordie story. Um, we're bringing it to live theatre uh, this November. It's going to be full of loads of Geordie craziness. Um, it's just a really important story to tell now, we thought, uh, with the takeover and, uh, and all of that. Um, and it's just such an iconic sort of Geordie film that we thought needed a sort of live interpretation. It is because when you think of North East films, you think of this and go. I think it would spring to mind for me and most viewers and most lads and lasses in Newcastle. And so it's good to get that modern twist on it. And it's relevant again now with the, the gold dust of tickets. Yeah, totally. Um, so w w the, our adaptation is set just before the takeover. So it's at the back end of the Asher years. So we see a lot of that involved in it. Um, so they don't steal Shira's car this time. <laughs> they steal uh, a certain someone else's car in it. Um, and yeah, so it just felt really relevant and really, and I think like the social political stuff with sort of the way the country's been going the last few years and all of that, it just felt a time to tell two large stories who can't get tickets. They can't afford to live, basically, but they, instead of trying to live, they try and get tickets for Newcastle United, which I think is the representation of most of our lives at the minute. More important than eating. <laughs> completely more important than eating, completely more important. Just let people know, Jimmy, I'll put the link in the uh, video description as well, we'll put it on our social media pages to buy tickets for the, just to let, let the viewers know. Yep, so it's uh, on at Live Theatre, you can get tickets from www.live.org um, and it's on from the 8th of November for two weeks, Live Theatre's on the Quayside in Newcastle. Right, people, we're joined here by the main characters of of the Piali Belter play, we've got Jerry, Sewell and Tainty, the very talented one who plays a lot of the characters in this God, That's you. Yeah? Yeah. That's you. Pressure. Right, then you can start off, mate. What, what can viewers expect in this bit? Uh, so, I think they can expect something for everyone. Uh, the play gives a lot of hope. Um, and anyone else want to dive in? There's comedy, there's drama. And hopefully some dance. 
But yeah. who knows? No, no. But who knows? Who knows? Because um, obviously a lot of people know the iconic movie, and that was a modern twist on this, on this one, on this play. So it's exciting, and I've just been here on there from Jamie. You know, it's going to be a lively atmosphere. Something that people might not necessarily expect. Sometimes at the theatre with that sort of reputation that it's got, it's going to be a lively event with even more flags being there as well. Oh yeah, I mean the fact that it's like so based on football that's the atmosphere that you want in there yeah. it's not it's not like a normal theater audience that we were getting in the last one that we did and we don't expect that in the next one either so that's yeah i feel like it's point. perfect timing as well because there's a big buzz in the city at the moment yeah. uh with yeah, newcastle definitely. united so i feel like it's it's all teed up for us to you know knock it out of the park yeah because you wouldn't have been able to do this a couple of years ago under the previous regime they wanted tickets then no exactly exactly. So, yeah, yeah. exactly so I think that's what that's what the uh, you know that's what the hope is brought back to the city and hopefully uh, people will get that from the play as well finally what did you want to get out of this why did you want to get involved in, in the Piani Buddies fans in the film yourself so yeah it's quite an iconic film in the North East um, and we were actually just talking about it just before the uh, we'd done this and uh, yeah it's just it's just a dream role for, especially for me for, to, to play and it's uh, something that I've always wanted to do so uh there you have it then folks, you have heard from the director, you've heard from the cast, they've talked about it, they've let you know what the crack is. The link to tickets will be in the description. It's going to be a class night, well, class week or 10 days, whatever it is that they're doing it for, you know, it's going to be an action-packed one, it's going to be a lot of entertainment across those 10 days. Link is in there. Get involved, support local businesses, support the local lads and lasses there that are taking part, you know what I mean? It's going to be great entertainment, a very good story. I'm really looking forward to seeing that modern twist on it and find out which player car they did steal because obviously it was Shira back in the day with Celine Dion. If you haven't seen the movie by the way you need to watch it because a lot of you probably haven't got a clue what I've just said there. In the purely Belt movie from back in the day the stole on Shira's car and there was a Celine Dion CD in there and oh not Celine Dion Alan. Amazing. Amazing right. Brilliant. So have a look. Check it out and get yourselves involved in the purely Belt play at the live theatre on the Quayside this November. There you go then. I hope you've enjoyed that one and if you did and you are interested in getting tickets to the play hit the link in the description. I'll be there, like I said, a couple of our special guests will be there as well across the 10 days of the event. Really excited for this one and happy to support local businesses, local entertainment and see our region thrive. All right then, so the title of the video, Jamal Lascelles, is he, could he be set for Saudi Arabia? Al-Shabaab are after Jamal Lascelles. They want a centre back. They've just put an offer in for Yannick Carrasco. Oh, they've got him, I'm not sure which one it is. From Atletico Madrid, obviously like a lot of Saudi teams, they are investing a lot of money in the transfer market and they are eyeing up Newcastle's captain, Jamal Lascelles, to join them. Now, it's one of only a few clubs that isn't actually owned by PIF, who obviously own Newcastle United as well, so there's no issue with him going there to Al-Shabaab. And it's a big one, this, because they're talking about £15 million. Pounds. They're talking about putting in a bit of £15 million. Pounds. For Jamal Lascelles, our fourth choice centre back. At the minute, it makes it a bit sticky because of Sven Botman's injury. Although Sven Botman has been posting that he's been back in Newcastle and training, and he'll be back soon. And on another positive note, it's Fabian Shaw has arrived for training with Switzerland on international duty. So his injury obviously isn't as bad as first feared when he was uh, really struggling towards the end of the game at the Amex or <laughs> the whole game like the rest of the team. But the thing is now that you've got Shaw and Botman hopefully fit for the Brentford game. Um, you've got Dummett and Bayern who can play centre-back and we'll get Tino Livermento involved at centre-back who would change formation and play Trippier in the back three like Southgate's done before and he's played there in the past. There's different ways around it, I suppose, because it's going to be hard to turn down this £15 million. If, if I'm going to be honest, I, I don't think Eddie Howe will want, it, want him to go. Could Ashraf and the people above him be like, sorry Eddie, but <laughs> this is £15 million quid. We're talking about FFP, yeah? The same reason we had to sell an old St. Maximin. Look at 15 million on the table for a bloke that turns 30 this November and for a bloke whose contract expires next summer. This time next year, if Newcastle don't obviously give him an extension, you'll be away. Jamal Lascelles' contract runs out in the summer of 2024. So for a player that's got <laughs> several months left on his contract, is about to hit 30, doesn't play anyways, is our fourth choice centre-back, are you not going to sell him? For me, I would sell him. And it's a risk. And it's a horrible risk now because us being in the Champions League, if Botman's injury is bad or he picks up another knock or Shaw picks up yet another niggle, then we are going to be knackered. But to me, that goes back to us in the transfer market. I think if only this offer came in two weeks ago when our window was still open, we would have accepted like that. We would have accepted half of the money. I think we would have accepted seven, eight, ten million. 
you know? So it would have been a done deal if it was a couple of weeks ago, but now we can't sign anyone. Can't sign Sergio Ramos, free agent, went to Sevilla. Not sure there's any other centre-backs out there who's a free agent. I doubt it. Not, not worth having. And then, let's like, listen, Alex Murphy. Alex Murphy, the young centre-back for the tune as well, did well in pre-season. You might just have to chuck him in now and again if injuries get bad. He, there's options there for me. I think I would sell. I would sell. Since his contract runs out next year, he's about to turn 30. He's a good backup option, don't get us wrong. But if you're going to get 15 million for him, and that's decent in terms of financial fair play, sell. And then you can bring in Byrne, Dummett, Murphy, change formation, get Trippier or Tino in, in centre-back. They've done that, done that there before. So it, I, I would be in favour of it. I would. Will it happen? I would I would probably say no at this point just because I think Eddie Howe will really put his weight out on this one and say we can't afford to lose them. With, 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 with Carabao Cup, with Champions League, with Premier League, we can't, we can't afford to lose them. And I get that. But my standpoint, like I've just said there, there's other options. Not fantastic options, but there's options there. And for the money for FFP, if it means sell the sellers now and hopefully we get through to January without any serious injuries and then we can really go out and buy a centre-back for 40 million in January. You know what I mean? With that money we've made from the sales. I'm all for that, like. I really am. The window closes in Saudi Arabia on Thursday. Let me know what yous would do with the sales. And let us know what you think of the purely better players. Looking forward to that one. Remember, the link is in the description for tickets to the play. Really excited for that one. Okay, then, people. Please do subscribe to my channel on TV, give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and I will see you on the next one.